Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey, everybody. Caleb here, just driving out on Atlanta Highway. And I saw a new story earlier this week that provoked a, a line of thinking in me that I wanted to share. I don't know how many of you have been following the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle, but one thing that I found really interesting is despite having the word autonomous in their name, they're not very autonomous. They do refer to themselves as self-governing, but there's not a lot of governing structure there. And when they did unfortunately have a real incident where there were people in danger and citizens needed help, they didn't have people to adequately police and that meant that they couldn't find the shooter and stop it in time. And they also did not have the ability to take care of, they didn't have emergency care for the people that were injured and it took them a while to be able to get in there. They've also had issues with sustaining themselves in regards to things like food. There's all kinds of things that they're not able to use. And I find it interesting that we get most of this news from people inside the autonomous zone, usually over the Wi-Fi that is going, that is still run by the city of Seattle, and through things like cell phones from the people inside there that are presumably still operating on the power they get from the city of Seattle's grid. And so this is the interesting thing that I want to bring up. I think that it highlights the relationship between freedom and responsibility. You see, to be truly autonomous, to be truly self-governing, you also have to be self-sustaining. This is a truism that Thomas Jefferson himself recognized, and it was one of the main reasons that he was such an open and vocal critic of debt. He understood that as long as we were dependent upon foreign powers, we would never be independent. That's why independent is the opposite of dependent. To be truly independent, to be truly free, you have to be able to operate on the things that you do yourself, to sustain yourself, to be able to provide for your own. That's what independence truly means. And the thing that has been very disappointing to me in the past several decades is we seem to have a whole lot of people that just don't care about independence. They don't really care about freedom. Sadly, this is true in a lot of ways for people in my own generation. There are a lot of people about my age and younger that don't have a problem with moving back home and not living out on their own, not making a living for themselves, just kind of cruising along depending on someone else. But what they may or may not realize, I think some of them do and some of them don't, is when they do give up that responsibility, they are also giving up their own freedom. That's why when you hear parents say, well, you live under my house, you live by my rules, well, that's true for a number of reasons. If they're going to be providing for you, then they get to make some of the rules by which you live your life. This is true on an international scale as well. Countries that are dependent on other countries for some of the things that they need, well, that's a very powerful bargaining token for other countries to be able to use to get those nations to do more or less what they want. This has been true throughout all of human history. And so I think that it's important to understand, yes, sometimes there are people that need help, but they are giving up their freedom to do so. And it's one of the primary reasons that there are so many people in government that are pushing for big government solutions, things like welfare, Medicaid for all, so on and so forth, because ultimately it is at the end a bid for more power and more control over people. The federal government does this all the time with the states. Oh, sure, we'll give you some money for education, but if you do, you're going to have to educate your students the way that we want you to educate them. Oh, sure, we'll give you some money and some grant for this research, but you're going to have to do it the way that we want you to. There's going to be some stipulations with that. Yeah, we'll give you money for this infrastructure project, but it has to be up to our codes and our standards in order for you to get that grant. You see, that's how the federal government very subtly manipulates the states into doing what they want. They do it with a tie to money. Ironically, money that was taken specifically from the residents of that state in the first place, which is incredible if you think about it. But ultimately, that is the lesson that we can draw from this, is that anytime you are dependent upon another person, that means you are sacrificing at least some of your independence, and that's why people ultimately want more people to be on government because that person is going to be dependent upon them 
and thus hand over their autonomy and the keys to their own life. Ultimately, big government is about controlling the people. Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?